why podcasting is different. It's the Podcast Report, episode 35, show notes, links, conversation, and more at thepodcastreport.com forward slash 35. It's the Podcast Report with Paul Colligan. And here's Paul. Everybody, this is Paul Colligan. Welcome to the Podcast Report. The big idea for today's episode, it's easy. Treating podcasts like old media is like faxing me your email. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Podcasting is bigger. Podcasting is different. And when we treat it for that and embrace it for that, we're going to see better results. This is your first time listening to the show. Let me tell you a little bit about it. This is the Podcast Report. My name is Paul, Paul Colligan. I am an author. I've got actually three books out on podcasting now. Uh, This one was a number one at pre-release. It's doing well. That's not what this show is about. Uh, This show is my gift, is my love to podcasting. I've been inside of podcasting since pretty much day one. And there's two members of this audience, two avatars for this show. There's the podcaster, those who are in podcasting who want to do better, and you like the show, and I appreciate that. But there's also a lot of you who are thinking about getting into podcasting, who who got that gut feeling that podcasting is different, you know, who know that it's not just like radio, you know, who want to do better. And and that's what this show is. It's not a massive play, but it's a deep one. With that said and done, let's get into this. This topic, this week, podcasting is different. Why? Why? I've seen a lot of people, I've done a lot of consulting in this space, and I've seen a lot of people come in with old media ideas. You know, they're trying to take the 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 round peg of podcasting and make it fit into the square hole of old media, and it's just not working. They try to treat it like old media, they act like it's old media, and then they're getting frustrated, they're getting upset when they don't see the results that they're looking for. Um, I did some consulting with a, with a, a podcast, rather big name. We built a good show. We came up with a great idea, but unfortunately they were treating it like it was a show on a big station at drive time that would automatically have listeners. You know, they, they put no money into marketing. They thought it was going to go viral, which is a big mistake people make, not just in podcasting, but in YouTube and everywhere else. And as a result, the show's not getting downloads. The show's not getting sponsors and everybody is just down about the whole thing. And it's kind of sad because the content's fabulous. The content's some of the best stuff I've heard out there. But because they're they're treating it like old media, they're getting themselves into a lot of trouble. Now, this comes from a large media background. It, it happens. Podcasting is better than this. Let's act like it. And, and, and there are four mores in podcasting as far as I'm concerned. The first one's more money. Um, when it comes to listens, there is more money in podcasting. You will make more money per 1,000 listeners in podcasts than you make anywhere else if you do it right. Now, obviously, there are some radio stations and sh- some shows with, you know, millions of the listening audience. They're going to do better than podcasting. But the fact of the matter is, there's more money per listener in podcasting if you do it right. There's more flexibility in podcasting if you do it right. There are more options, and options and flexibility is is different, really, honestly, because what happens, it sounds like I'm trying to convince you there, I'm, I'm not, flexibility is, is you can only really do what you want. Options are, there are lots of ways to do it. And then finally, there, there's freedom, there's there's intellectual freedom, there's freedom of speech, there's freedom to to meet the audience, you know, that, that you know you want to meet and, and hit the avatar that you know you want to hit. And, and it's a lot of fun. So, I want to hit some of the ways it's different. I want to hit some of the ways podcasting is different and, and prognosticate a little bit on this. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways. Uh, boy, sometimes it seems like seven's the magic number. That wasn't what I was going for, but but let's let's start. Number one, podcasting is not limited by time. One of the big questions I get all the time is how long should a podcast be? And, and sometimes I want to give a smart aleck response of, well, how long should a piece of string be? You know, it kind of depends on what you're doing. And that's one of the ways that we're different. You know, we can do the show perfect for our audience. You know, unfortunately, a lot of times we're trying to find an audience for the show. You, you know, and that, that's not the way it works in podcasting. That's not the opportunity. Let's give people the exact show they want. The um, reference I get from from listeners, and, and if I'm if I'm missing this, let me know if you want more or less. But one of the things I'm hearing about this show is, hey, Paul, as as a podcaster, there are a lot of shows about podcasting. I I, I don't want you to ramble on um, about your life and what's going on. I want you to go straight to the facts. I want you to do that. Give me the show that gives me that, gives me the nugget, gives me the action items, and then sends me home. 
you know, if I was trying to fill the show the perfect time, some of these shows have been 12 minutes. Some of these have nearly gone to 30 minutes. I have that freedom. You know, people come to me on, on an average basis, and it's it's so funny because logic seems to have gone the wayside sometimes. I've I've had people on consulting gigs, on on well paid consulting gigs, say, "Hey, Paul, how can I find the top podcast for X?" Well, you go into iTunes and you type in X, and that's the top podcasts. Um, deliver what makes sense to your audience. Think it through. You're not limited by time. You're not restricted by time. You're not formatted by time. It's not the length of the podcast. It's the depth of the content. Really, really important. And not only are you not limited by time, but you're not restricted by content. And this isn't, you know, when when podcasting started, um, it seemed to be that there was a lot of excitement about the ability to go blue. You know, there's some podcasts out there that would make Howard Stern blush and, and go for it. Um, freedom of the speech is dear to me and important to me, but that's not what I mean by saying not restricted by content. The not restricted by content part is the about being able to go extremely niche and extremely deep. A couple of episodes ago, we chatted about, you know, if there was a podcast where you only had one listener, but that listener paid you a million dollars, you do that podcast in a, in a heartbeat. And maybe you don't have that million dollar listener, but boy, you know, 10, 20, 30 people who make up your entire revenue because you're giving them exactly what you want. That's niche. That's specific. And that's the stuff you don't see in traditional media, but because you give them exactly what you want to give them, it's just a better product. You know, I just released my How to Podcast book you know, a couple of days into the wild. It was on pre-release for a while, but it's it's now in the wild and it's funny because I was thinking about that compared to my old books. I, I used to write some tech books. And if you go into, into um, Amazon today, you can see a, a couple of the YouTube books I did. I did these books that were 1,200 pages long. Oh, my goodness. And it was because some editorial director in some educational publishing company determined that this is what the audience wanted. And the funny thing was, I was running a website about front page at the time. I had an audience. I had a list of, of tens of thousands. I knew what front page users wanted. But, you know, someone in a, in a high tower somewhere said, no, it has to be this way. Then I started publishing the books that I knew they wanted. I, I, I published my, my first, I did an audio book um, called Front Page Secrets that, that made me more money than any of the other books did. And it went deep and it went niche. And, and that's what we can do in, in podcasting. See, it's not the format of podcasting. It's not the content of podcasting. It's the message of podcasting that's so powerful. So embrace that and make use of that. You're not locked into old models. And and this is huge. You know, um, old models of, of just production, you have to have the sound studio, you have to have the engineer, you know, you have to have the license to broadcast, you have to have all these things. Um, you don't. You're not locked into those old models. But you're also not locked into all the old models of monetization. And this is one of the ones that, that, that drives me crazy, and it has for the last 10 years. So many people, the only way to make money in podcasting is to put an ad for something. Well, first of all, no. <laughs> and secondly, no. And, and, and thirdly, no. Um, that's one way to make money from podcasting. And, and we, we chat about this in past episodes, and you can go ahead and look at the back catalog if you want. But you're not locked into the old models. There are some new exciting models that some are doing. But get this, there are also new models to be found new models to be played with. And that is exciting. And not being locked into it means you're at a much better place. You see, you're not limited by rules anymore. You're open to options. It's an entirely different game. Another one that a lot of people miss, but is extremely important, is that you're not platform dependent. You know, I released the book, last couple of books I released to Kindle only. Well, Kindle isn't the only game in the world in digital. There is Barnes & Noble. There is the Sony Kobos. You know, there is all these devices out there. And when you publish on Kindle, you're not, you know, you're playing a game that the 800-pound gorilla that is Amazon is going to be enough. Well, it's, it's not a bad game to play. And there's some strategies for only going on Amazon. And Amazon has some reasons for only going on Amazon. But the fact of the matter is... I went with Book Baby and I got the book produced to all digital platforms. If you have an ebook platform, my book is available for it because 
I, I had to work with all the platforms. And a company like Book Baby comes out that makes it doable and makes it possible. But we don't have that worry in podcasting. The very podcast I'm recording right now, somebody's listening to on an iPhone somewhere. Somebody's listening to on a Microsoft phone somewhere. Somebody's listening to on an Android phone somewhere. Someone's listening to on a BlackBerry phone. But you know what? It's not just phones. Some people are listening to this on their television sets. Some people listen to this in their car stereos. Whatever platform we're on, it doesn't matter. This podcast works on all of them. And oh man, that is fabulous. See, radio, they have to have an antenna. They have to be in the market. They have to be listening at a certain time. It's 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 very locked in. It's very specific. You know, YouTube, you got to have, well, you got to be at YouTube.com or, or maybe it's embedded and you got to look at video. And, you know, if you don't have access to that, you know, you're not dependent on the platform, which is huge. Now, many of you know, I speak to multicasting and, and multicasting is the idea of create your content and broadcast it everywhere. Somebody right now is reading this as a transcript in a Kindle book. Well, this started as a podcast that I recorded, you know, February 25th, 2015. Yet somehow it's a transcript somewhere read by somebody on a digital book somewhere. That's multicasting. Still strategic, still important, still part of the process, but it's different from producing a podcast that is completely and totally platform independent. If you combine platform independence with a multicasting strategy, boy, now you got something huge. So you're not platform specific. You're truly independent. And that radio that you think you're competing with, they don't have that option. That television station that you think you're competing with, they don't have that option. Embrace that. It is worth its weight in gold. Now, another one, and I speak to this a lot, and I cannot pound this in enough. We are powered by subscriptions. I've ranted about this in the past, but the fact of the matter is, once I get a subscriber, the marketing stops. And this is better than people just knowing that I'm on every day from four to seven during drive time. It's people knowing that whenever they want to listen on whatever device they want to listen, however they want to listen, multiple times speed, whatever it is they can. Once I have a subscriber, nothing's going to stop me from communicating with them. Now, obviously, if they don't like what I say, they don't like what I do, they don't like, you know, the message isn't matching, they can unsubscribe at any time or they can not listen. But the fact that we're powered by subscriptions changes the game. Spoke to this last week. I know people who are getting thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads just from the subscribers, just with the release of a new podcast. That is powerful, that is insane, and something that should be embraced, something that, that, that should be utilized. Another thing that's great in podcasting that we don't get in old media is the ability to leverage or the fact that we leverage other people's networks. We've hit this in, in past episodes. There are podcasters who I've heard who've ranted about the sound quality of Network X. Okay, Network X is distributing your content to their audience. God bless them. Let them. If anybody, you know, you know, count this as legal. If anybody wants to pick up my show and put it on their network, just keep the show in its entirety. That's all I ask. You are welcome to distribute my show on whatever network you want. Tell me about the network because in exchange for you promoting me, I very well might promote you. That's why, you know, I've got the links to all the different places I'm located. I had a guy email me. Um, somebody in the industry, somebody who's doing well, who said, you know, well, I don't like iHeartRadio because of the, of the hoops. iHeartRadio makes you jump through to listen. And it's true. iHeartRadio is, is annoying. But yesterday, and I checked the stats, so I only know about yesterday. Yesterday, more than one person, okay, four, but didn't have to work so hard for it. Distribution's automatic. Yesterday, four people listened to my show on iHeartRadio. And I didn't have to do anything. Well, I had to do something once. I had to set it up once. They're distributing. They're going to get bigger. Uh, they're going to do better. They're, they're going to wake up and smell the coffee. And, you know, you get enough networks making you listen to four or enabling four to listen to you. And this kind of stuff begins to add out. Don't get upset when somebody else wants to distribute your network. Leverage the fact that somebody else wants to, to distribute you on their network. You are not tied to any network. You are on all of the networks. Let's go over these again. It's not the length of the podcast. 
It's the depth of the content. It's not the format. It's the message. You're not limited by rules. You are open to all the options. You're not platform specific. You're truly independent. It's not an audience. It's a subscriber. And you're not tied to a network. You're on all of them. Podcasting is different. Podcasting is better. And you, well, those of you who are podcasters know it, embrace it, utilize it. And for those of you who haven't launched your podcast yet, get your podcast out the door and make it happen so that you can leverage everything we've chatted with so far. As you guys know, on the show, what I'm doing, what you could be doing about what it is that I've chatted about. I'll tell you this, whenever I do anything, I ask why I'm doing it. Why am I doing it this way? Am I doing it this way because everybody does it this way? Or I'm doing it this way because the opportunity that it embraces and it opens up for me. Ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing. It's it's a powerful exercise, no matter what what it is that you're doing, podcasting or otherwise. Um, I do that. I recommend you do the same. W- w- what you can do is just to ask yourself, have a heart to heart. You know, if, if you're a, a, the person who needs to journal this kind of thing, if you're the person who needs to head out to a website to talk about this thing, it, it doesn't matter. But just ask yourself how you are treating your podcast. Are you treating it just like old media or are you embracing some of the elements of new media? Because it's pretty exciting what's out there. Uh, what could you do differently for the money, the flexibility, the options, the freedom I spoke to earlier? Um, I bet you, you could change, you could tweak something and, and see more money, flexibility, options, or freedom, or gosh darn it, all of them. Uh, if you see some results with this, share it with me. I'll do what I can to spread the word. Um, all the social for this show is at thepodcastreport.com slash Twitter slash Facebook slash Instagram. It's all there. Uh, go ahead, follow up, like, etc. cetera. Uh, the blog is up. You can go ahead and you can comment away. If you head out to the podcastreport.com forward slash 35, there is a place to comment. If you want to text hashtag EP35 to the show hotline, 503-897-1290. We'll get you the transcripts and the mind map from the show. If you want to leave me a voicemail message, go ahead and do that. I've got three links at the website for you for today's episode. I've got a link to the How to Podcast book. It wouldn't be right if I didn't. Um, The How to Podcast Facebook site's been fun as well for you new podcasters. I started a thread over at Google, the Google Podcaster Hangout. I'm trying to deal with this this element that there's this obsession with with stuffing podcasting, you know, into this old media hole. And, and, And I took a different direction and boy, it got interesting and it got heated fast and, um, I think I insulted some people, and so the first thing I want to do is is I wasn't here to insult. I, I was here to to dialogue, and I, I, I'm truly sorry if I did that, and I want to link out to that so that people can see what's happened. Now, I basically said just I'm, I'm not excited, you know, automatically that somebody comes from podcasting might be intrigued, but it doesn't mean they're going to be good at podcasting any more than them, you know, coming from typing means they're going to be good at programming. It's just not an automatic connection, and anybody who thinks it is, is is doing more damage to the industry. So I started the thread. It's gotten heated already, and it's only been up a couple of hours, so it'll be interesting to see what happens, especially when this podcast releases. I mentioned subscriptions earlier. Would love to have you subscribe to this show, thepodcastreport.com slash iTunes, thepodcastreport.com slash Stitcher, or slash Pocket Casts, or slash TuneIn, or slash Spreaker, or slash, yes, iHeartRadio slash Overcast. They're all there. would love you to subscribe. Uh, for those of you who know the show, I have not yet cracked the SoundCloud nut. I'm getting there. I'm getting closer. I think something will happen soon. I guess the last two things to say before I sign off is that the email for the show is thepodcastreport at outlook.com. And of course, I love comments and love reviews. If you want to put one up at iTunes or Stitcher, those th- seem to be the two that matter right now. Thank you so much. Can't wait to come back to you next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.